Today we're talking about Viltrox, specifically the 85mm Mark II Sony full frame lens. And I'm going to compare it against my Sony 85mm 1.8 lens that I'm still paying for because I got it on credit with my Sony a7 III about three years ago. I believe the 85mm focal length is something every creator, photographer, cinematographer should have in their bag because it's a classic portrait lens that isolates your subject very beautifully from the background. It creates stunning portraits close up. The minimal focus distance is 80 centimeters on both of these. So you're not gonna get in super close, but it's it will do for a very nice portrait. Now, you can see the Viltrox on the right here is a little bit larger than the Sony and it's a little bit fatter. It, it's, it's just that a little bit meatier and it feels, they both feel very nicely built. You know, it, it, it feels like you've bought something worth its price. The Sony at 600, the Viltrox at 400. If I had $600 in my pocket right now, I'd go for the Viltrox and I'd save myself $200, which I'd probably spend on some other photography gear. You know, you know what it's like. <sighs> it's a painful world out there. 484 grams, 371 grams. So there's a little bit more weight on the Viltrox, but it's not something that gets in my way. The Sony apparently has weather sealing, though there is no weather sealing gasket. Neither is there one on the Viltrox, but the Viltrox does have something interesting. It has a USB-C port, sorry, USB micro port. The um, Canon RF version that has the AF-MF switch, which is missing on the Sony to my <sighs> dismay has a USB-C port. The Sony Mark II 85mm has a USB micro port, which means that you can connect it to your computer for future updates. So if they're, they're gonna speed up autofocus or improve the eye autofocus, you're just gonna connect to the computer and upgrade. The Sony, you buy it, that's what you get. You can't upgrade it. So fantastic implementation by Viltrox in this lens. The focus, is, yep, it's a lot smoother on the Viltrox. It has a lot more resistance and the focus throw is a lot longer. It's basically 360 degrees. Whereas on the Sony, it feels, it there is hardly any resistance and the focus throw is a lot, lot shorter. So if you wanna dial in for cinematography for really nice portrait shots, the Viltrox will be a lot better when it comes to focus. When it comes to automatic focus, the Sony uses a double linear motor, whereas the Viltrox has a focus by wire. Now, they both work really well and they're very comparable. I did some examples on myself, just showing you how they work with face detection. So, you know, let's, let's check those out right now. So as you can see, both very comparable. It's definitely not a $200 difference right there. Inside, we have an iris, 1.8 to f16, 1.8 to f22. So you've got a stop darker. It closes down a stop more on the Sony. Is that a deal breaker for me? Not at all. I don't really ever shoot that closed down. And I don't think I would because generally a lens all the way down isn't performing at its best. We're talking about a 72 millimeter filter thread on here and a 67 millimeter thread on here. And the iris inside these lenses, nine blades, nine blades. So you've got beautifully round balls. In fact, I did a film on the Sony about two years ago. You can check out here. And if you wanna look at the balls that Viltrox has and Sony has on my Christmas tree, we're gonna check those out right now. As you can see, the Sony is a little bit more oval on the corners, whereas the Viltrox has more round balls. So yeah, Viltrox, very nice balls, very nice balls. Bokeh is just, it's on fire on this where it's not so dialed in on the Sony. Nano coating, right here, nano coating. I mean, you, you, you can almost see the nano coating on the Viltrox. The Sony no doubt has some coating of its own, but we got nano coating on the Viltrox to stop ghosting and flaring and, you know, 
all that jazz so your image is just that little bit more crisp and clean. 10 elements, seven groups, nine elements, eight groups. Does that mean anything to you? It, no, it, it, it shouldn't. It's the image, the final image at the end of the day, which is important. Let's check out some photos I took in Iceland a couple of, I don't know, three or four weeks ago. Very cold. Like I said, these guys, you know, weatherproofed, not weatherproofed, but I use this solely in Iceland in horrible, horrible weather. I mean, it was, it was nasty. But check out the image that came out of it. They both come with lens hoods, caps, they both have eye autofocus, they both have minimal focus of 80 centimeters, and they both are very well built. <sighs> One last thing I gotta tell you, which a lot of people fuss and moan about, is that they don't have image stabilization. I'm not sure if I have any lenses. I might have one lens of image stabilization. It's not a problem. Don't worry about it. Most cameras have image stabilization inside right now, and it's 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 not a big deal. You can do without it, really. You can do without it. It's not something I miss, so don't worry about image stabilization. The only thing, the only thing, is that AF MF button for me personally, and I see they've already started implementing it into different lenses. So that's um, that's a fantastic thing. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you want to give me a like, which would really help, you know, me, my channel, then that would be much appreciated. And, you know, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do, because a ton more things coming. 2022 is going to be full of stuff. I'm looking down because I'm checking out my cheat sheet, and I did forget focus breathing. 85mm lenses are quite long, so they do have a lot to focus on. But if you check out the examples of these on my um, spaceman over there, you'll see that they're pretty comparable. It's not like the 24mm and the Sony 24mm where this basically has no focus breathing and the Sony is all over the place. No doubt why they started implementing focus breathing assist into cameras like the Sony a7 IV. But um, yeah, just check, check this out. See, I mean, you're always going to see it, especially if you're going from 80 centimeters all the way into infinity and back. It's, it's inevitable on a lens this long. Anyway, I'm going to let you go now. Have a lovely day and uh, yeah, catch you guys soon. 50 millimeter in testing.